Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. Well, if you believe in the afterlife, you may imagine an image of a guy named Bin Laden, who, even as he squirms in hopefully a quite uncomfortably warm place, he might still have a bit of a smug, self-righteous smile on that face of his, the reason being, in the end, he's succeeded in ways he probably never imagined. You feel it, I feel it. Since 9-11, 2001, that evil-minded, murderous excuse for a man gave our illustrious bureaucratic leaders an excuse to dictate and regulate in ways that would have been unimaginable just a generation ago. As Democrat politician Rahm Emanuel once famously said, You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. Seems like sort of a bureaucratic golden rule these days. Well, my fellow Western New Yorkers, that's just one of the subjects for today's big picture. It's a subject that's going to affect you very directly and, and soon. If you have a driver's license, that is. And if that driver's license is ever going to be renewed, you see, as of October 1st, 2020, if you don't have an enhanced driver's license, or what's called another form of real ID, don't expect to travel in this country on airlines. That's right, citizens. It's about to get just a tiny bit tougher for you to point to yourself and say, no, really, that's who I am. Thank you, Mr. Bin Laden. And unfortunately, when these decisions are made, it falls on our local officials to make sure that the rules get put into place and they deal with us, the people who are just looking for someone to complain about or to complain to. I happen to have one of those local officials on the big picture with me today, Mickey Kearns, our hardworking county clerk, someone I consider a friend. Uh, Mickey, hopefully it's not as bad as I just described. <laughs> Welcome well, to the show. Phil, you're absolutely correct. This was a federal law that was passed after 9-11. Uh, in 2005 and the idea was is to have one database where we'd have a, a unified identification which would be the driver's license the uniform ID throughout the United States and there'd be one database uh, that the federal government could look at uh, when you're gonna be flying so when you have people who are on the no-fly zone uh, and I'm gonna add to it our, uh, our governor wants to let people who are not even citizens of this country yet now we work with people who uh, are here properly and they have the proper documentation uh, for uh, work. Uh, we have great global companies like Moog and other companies that we want to work with them. We've got great universities like the University of Buffalo where we give proper identification, but they have the proper ID. The governor and the legislature may be passing a bill that will grant uh, illegal aliens driver's licenses with just a birth certificate. Uh, no social security card and a passport. Uh, that is unconscionable for me. So when you talk about how uh, Bin Laden has changed our country and we'll talk a little bit more about the enhanced driver's license, it's even more unconscionable that our local and state representatives are advocating for this uh, license for people who are not even citizens who do not have any documentation. Well, we went through that in California when I was out there. It, you know, they, they suggested that uh, people who are undocumented could get driver's licenses and they said that was going to be uh, more orderly and it was going to be safer and there were a whole bunch of reasons why it would be a good thing. And then separately, in, a, in another conversation, just kind of unconnected, they suggested that, you know what, if you had a driver's license, that should be enough for you to be able to vote. Right. <laughs> Which kind of Funny how that works. Um, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where there's always an agenda in the background. There's always agenda, and especially with this governor, Governor Cuomo, mm -hmm. and uh, we should be putting our citizens first. And uh, in this instance, uh, I had to have the opportunity to meet with our uh, representatives from ICE to talk about my concerns. Mm -hmm. And they brought a host of issues up in that meeting. Uh, if you forget the driver's license issue, uh, the criminality aspect of it and how that's going to impact our community. They gave examples of people who were uh, 
had outstanding warrants that would be applying for new identification. Uh, sex offenders. And if you think about it, Phil, uh, and if you're looking for a new identity, who would ever thought, you talked about generations ago, that you can go to the Auto Bureau and get a new identity, get a new lease on life. Uh, I know it seems a little comical, but now we have these standards that the legislature is considering, but the Congress uh, gave us new standards with the real ID. And as you stated so eloquently, in 2020, uh, if you don't have an enhanced driver's license or a passport uh, to go with the standard driver's license, you will not be able to fly, uh, and that means domestically to Florida, you're gonna visit relatives to California, anywhere throughout the United States, you will not be able to get on a plane. You know, the, the <clears throat> emergency that Rahm Emanuel was talking about, not to waste, it's just, it seems that it's an excuse for the intrusion into the privacy of the citizens and, and the regulations and the, the dictates, there seems to be kind of a, a creeping power that takes over uh, and it all boils down to an inconvenience for the, the citizens in the name of security, in the name mm -hmm. of, of, you know, we're doing this for you, mm -hmm. you know, this is for your own good. And I just, I'm, I get the feeling that it, you have to draw the line somewhere, but who draws the line? Phil, it even gets even worse. There's another bill that's been proposed by a senator that before you can apply for a pistol permit, that they would go through your uh, social media accounts. And what concerns me, I have a daughter, uh, she's a sophomore at Canisius College, a beautiful young girl. The generation that I see before me, um, <clears throat> they are um, saying that it's okay because they were born around that 9-11 time and they were born they've always had these restrictions upon them and they felt as though that the government could say well we need to see these things uh, you have rights it's called the right uh, to be uh, protected from illegal search and seizure the fourth amendment and you have a first amendment right to express your views that's called free speech uh, i know president kennedy gave a speech uh, about the first amendment and about the protection of the press and I'm very concerned that because uh, many of our young people have been brought up uh, with these intrusions that they think it's part of everyday life. We know differently because we were brought up at a different time. Uh, there are reasons why our founding fathers uh, gave us uh, you know, these protections. And it's ironic that uh, many of our young people only know about them, and I enjoyed the play Hamilton, uh, but they don't understand history. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know what happens uh, with history if we don't uh, watch out. It normally repeats itself. Well, you know, it, as a student of history, there, there was a, uh, in Britain, in the early 1900s, there was a society called the Fabian Society. Mm -hmm. and, and not a lot of people know about them these days. Uh, George Bernard Shaw was a member. H.G. Uh, Wells mm -hmm. was a, a member. They were quite rich uh, influential British uh, citizens. The Fabian Society was a socialist society. And they agreed with the communists, they just thought that the communists were too heavy handed. Right. Their philosophy was incrementalism. Right. If you did it slowly and you kind of did it in increments, you could eventually have a socialist world. And people wouldn't know that it was kind of creeping up on them. You would just do it slowly. Mm -hmm. And their, that philosophy, uh, you know, if you look at what's happened in the century since then, <laughs> they kind of got their way. I mean, it, the way things have, have progressed just in, you know, the last couple of generations. You know, the, when my dad was growing up, there was very little in the way of regulations compared with today. I mean, when he was growing up, he was driving a car at the age of 12. He was driving, right. he was the first one in his family, which had come over from Italy. He was the first one born here, and he was driving his family around at the age of 12. Right. He didn't have a driver's license, he didn't need one. It was a much more informal world, if you would. And it just basically grew from there. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of sad, <laughs> but it's the way government grows and, and that's to me that's the purpose of government it's not to serve the people it's to survive 
and it's to grow. That's always been the way government evolves. And you said it best, and what we're doing at the Auto Bureau, uh, especially with the Real ID, yesterday I was in Amherst, and we started what's called uh, outreaches. So we have, we talked about the golden rule, the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. I don't think young people understand now it's uh, standardized testing and yeah. other things. But uh, we started, I sat down, I didn't hire a consultant. I sat down, we thought it through. I did my own research and we came up, uh, when people came to the Auto Bureau, uh, if they were ready, that means they were prepared, uh, and if they made a reservation, uh, I was able to identify $1.5 million that was sitting in an account for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew it was there. And if they obviously want them to renew local to keep uh, the money here, we have our three R's. We're going out and we're creating these ready outreaches where we'll sit down with many of our senior citizens. They may not have access to the internet. They may not know how to make a reservation. But because the state, uh, in their infinite wisdom, they don't give me the renewal information. That goes from the mm -hmm. state of New York right to the people that say, you have to renew your license. In many instances, they don't give the correct information. And if people aren't online, for example, most women uh, who uh, were married, from the beginning uh, to the renewal of their license, they have to bring in their original marriage certificate. So mm -hmm. that name on the marriage certificate will have to be exact on the real ID. Well, that makes sense. It has mm -hmm. to be, you know, a birth certificate. Uh, it has to, you know, um, corroborate that who you are. It's our basic form of documentation, or an, an old passport. But the thing is, is uh, they didn't tell these people. So people are coming in. They're not ready. They're upset, they're frustrated. So what we're doing is we're going out. I was in Amherst yesterday, met with the executive director, Pam, and we said, we wanna come out to you and we're gonna start going to all the senior centers. We're gonna start going to different areas and we're gonna get people ready, Phil, before they even come in the door. Mm -hmm. how, how unique is that? Mm -hmm. We have a checklist for them. They remember they used to say, uh, they put a man on the moon with a checklist. Well, we're gonna give you a checklist to make sure when you come in and then we're gonna give you an envelope. And then when you get in there, you're going to have a reservation and you're going to be out in 10 minutes. It's going to be a beautiful thing. But you're right. I mean, here are extra steps that we're taking to make sure that people are prepared, especially our senior citizens, people who have language barriers, who are citizens. And we've helped a lot uh, over the past couple months. And we sat down with their, uh, in most instances, they bring their grandchildren in. And it's a good thing. So this ID is so, so important. And you don't want to be the outside looking in. If you want to get into Canada, uh, if you want to board a domestic flight, mm -hmm. and, and here's my last thing I want to say. I did talk to some senior citizens and some people. They said, Mickey, I'll never get on a plane. You just don't know. So you better be prepared. Either have the passport or have the real ID, and that's it. just got to do it. It's today's world. It's part of society today. It's really what you need to do. <clears throat> okay, well, that's it for this segment. When we come back, we're going to switch gears a little bit, talk more about the clerk's office, some of the other services that uh, Mickey has uh, you know, going in, in the clerk's office, uh, the DMV, and some of the services that, that you can count on uh, when you go to the clerk's office. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 